Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of High Energy Girl, and today's amazing guest is Jessica Van Antwerp, owner and CEO of Integral Travel. Jessica provides wellness retreats and education to teach people how to unlock their body's natural healing capacity while connecting with others and the planet. This is such an amazing episode. We talk all things about Qigong and energy and yoga and massage and all my favorite stuff. So let's go and say hello to Jessica. Hey everyone, welcome to High Energy Girl, a podcast helping women to age stronger because it is never too late to get fit, be strong, and feel sexy. I'm your host, Tracy Gluhide, health coach and personal trainer and founder of highenergygirl.com. Each week we will either have a guest interview which will provide you encouragement or an actionable tip to help you age stronger, or I will do a solo episode. Please also join our awesome Facebook group called High Energy Girls, and I'm looking forward to see you on the inside of that group and hope you enjoy today's show. Guess what, everyone? My book is out. It is a revised and updated edition of a book I wrote five years ago called No Frickin' Way, 21 Days to Ditch the Diet and Lose Weight the Keto Way by Loving Yourself to Health. When I first wrote the original book, I was not a believer in the low-carb movement, but after all the years of research I've done, I am sold out for life. In this book, you will learn about all the lies you have been fed, how to engage in loving self-care, how to eat nourishing foods that provide massive energy, why the ketogenic diet is not a fad, how to heal your body through fasting, why you should move your body to get stronger, and how to create an empowering mindset. Start reading now and finally achieve the high energy and positive body image you deserve. Check it out on Kindle, on Amazon. And if you like it, please leave us a review because this will help more people find it. I really want to inspire people to not deprive themselves, but to nourish themselves with loving self-care and amazingly healthy food so that they can age stronger. Thank you so much, and I hope you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed writing it. Hey, Jessica, thanks so much for coming on the show today. Thanks for having me, Tracy. I'm excited to be here. Me too. I am so excited to hear all about you. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself? Well, um, it's sort of a long story, I guess, as they all are, but uh, I grew up at, in Austin, Texas as an athlete, so had lots of um, bodily awareness and, uh, and how to kind of keep my body in shape from an athletic perspective, and, um, but I always was sort of overweight um, and struggled with anxiety and low self-esteem, and as I got older, started to... Um, started to explore nutrition. I became vegetarian for about five years in my early 20s. Um, and it wasn't actually good for my body or the way that I was doing it wasn't good for my body because I didn't know enough about how to replace the protein and particularly the iron in my diet. Um, so I ended up like losing consciousness in public twice. <laughs> and yeah, uh, so I was severely anemic at the time. So that prompted me to, to start to learn more about nutrition. I did introduce meat back into my diet and I learned how to like feel the effects of when I was becoming a little iron deficient um, and then how to replace that um, with both animal protein and uh, plants. So um, that was sort of... Um, concurrent with my exploration into yoga. Um, so I was starting to get into meditation, a little more mindfulness practices, which ultimately led me to, um, to massage school. And from there, it was just this whole world of health and wellness was like blown open to me. So, you know, I obviously had a lot of familiarity already with the human body because of my history as an athlete. And so I was able to kind of apply that in uh, my profession as a massage therapist. And the school that I went to had this really broad focus outside of just 
using massage as like a medical treatment. It really incorporated um, the spirit into our our lessons and energy. There was even an energy class, and we learned some some more subtle body techniques like lymph drainage and cranial sacral. And um, and as part of my shiatsu training in massage school, I was introduced to qigong, mm. which has has then served as the undercurrent of my life ever since then. And this was about um, 12 years ago, 13 years ago. And um, qigong just opened up this world of magic to me. Um, I'd always been fascinated by the concept of energy. Um, having come from a very secular and scientific background, I was atheist at one point and didn't believe in like, you know, anything that couldn't be measured and seen and proven by instruments. Um, but then had this had uh, a very spiritual awakening, I guess, for lack of a, a better phrase, like I found God in in a road trip on my way through Colorado in um, 2003. And uh, that was what ultimately led me to Colorado, which is where I went to massage school and then started developing my spirituality under the umbrella and and with the um, influence of Qigong and traditional Chinese medicine. So my spirituality is... um, is all about energy and all about the oneness of everything, the energy that permeates both animate and inanimate objects, living things, and even the rocks that surround us. And uh, so my Qigong practice has really helped infuse my bodywork practice as well. I get lots of comments from people that they can just tell I'm operating on a different plane than than just a, like a regular massage therapist who's going in with a sort of like medical approach. So... Yeah, that's sort of the meandering short version of a long story. I love it. You've just got a tear to my eye when you said that you found God on that road trip. That was beautiful. Love it. Oh, yeah. So I, well, I haven't been doing it lately because I've been distracted. But I am, like, I've done Qigong. I am I do Panggu Shengon, which is from this master. Do you know him? Master way in san francisco i don't know him but that was one of the your podcasts that i listened to actually um about about the the guy who was talking about um him and and that style of practice and it was just it just resonated so deeply with me and i start to i can i'm so empathic i can like feel the effects of qigong when i just hear someone talking about doing qigong you know i'm like yeah oh my gosh that's so So beautiful excuse me so you dove into it after that. Yeah. So I did level one. I did the moving form, the non-moving form. And then I went up to San Francisco and by Master Wei's daughter, I got certified in the healing Qigong. So when I work with clients, I actually do the the practice with that. I need to get back and doing my own personal practice. I um, kind of went down this little like a segue in my life right now. So I'm trying to get back, you know, into my habit of doing energy work on myself. I tend to do for everybody else, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Yeah. Easy to do that, to fall into that pattern. Yeah. So that is super exciting. So what are you doing now specifically just on a day-to-day basis with your career? Are you doing massage? I mean, tell me a little bit about your typical week. Yeah, I'm still doing a lot of massage, uh, but I've also I felt for the last number of years a little constrained by the title massage therapist because I think it's sort of like from a from a consumer or client perspective, it sort of puts me in this box of like what I can do and what I can help them with, and I feel like I have such a vast amount of knowledge that I can I can offer nutritional guidance and I can offer, you know, I did get certified as a yoga teacher, so I can give them stretches that address their particular pain patterns. I have, um, I've been teaching Qigong for almost a decade, and I I just know from my personal experience how profound it has been for me. And um, I want to offer that same um, personal power to other people. You know, it's not just that I want to teach them Qigong, but it's about the benefits that I know that people can bring from it. And so now 
I am um, running a retreat company called Integral Travel that sort of combines all of these different areas of expertise that I have and and brings in people that I know in the industry for having been in you know Boulder, Colorado, which is one of the health and wellness capitals of the U.S. Um, all of the connections that I have here in the community um, to bring in their expertise into these retreats also. So the retreats are a combination of kind of all of the, the health and wellness practices that I know, as well as the gifts of, of my colleagues in the field as well. Um, to just provide this really amazing, healing, rejuvenating experience with the goal of um, ultimately empowering people in their own health and teaching them like little things that they can incorporate into their daily lives once they get back. Because that's the thing about retreats, right? It's like easy to go along and just go along for this ride and you have this great experience and then you you go home feeling great and then, you know, weeks go by, month, months go by and you just slide back into your old habits and patterns. So the real, the trick is how to pick up like little tools and techniques you can incorporate into your daily life that are easy, that you're motivated by, that you resonate with to just to help you feel more vital on a day-to-day -day basis. Awesome. That is really good. Like all these little nuggets that you can start practicing right when you get home. So where do you have the retreats, Jessica? The retreats are all over the world. We, um, I'm, I'm doing some here in Colorado. I've sort of like brought it back home locally. Um, but we go to Thailand, we've been to Morocco, we've been to Scotland, we've been to Costa Rica. We've, um, I have scouted some trips, uh, or a trip in Kenya. I haven't actually been able to make it happen yet, but, um, but yeah, we're open to going anywhere and everywhere. Um, because there's so much to be learned from other cultures and in a sort of immersive experience that that kind of blows your mind open beyond, you know, the little bubbles that we can sometimes get caught in at home in our daily lives. Oh my gosh, I freaking love that. So you go, have you been to Bali? I have not personally been to Bali, but the company has run retreats in Bali. Yeah, absolutely. So my, I got certified for yoga a couple, two or three years ago. I can't remember now. And that, the guy who certified us came here to our town. He's from here originally, but he was in Thailand and now he's in Bali. And he's like, just live in the dream, teaching yoga teachers how to teach. How cool is yeah. that? It's amazing. And the, the lifestyle over there in my experience in Thailand is just so beautiful. It's so much more relaxed and slow paced than our lifestyle here in the U S and I just want that <laughs> you know, the pandemic I feel like was such a blessing in a lot of ways for so many people because it really, it made us slow down. It made us just have to be home at least for, you know, six weeks when the whole country was shut down. Um, and, and just look around us and, uh, find appreciation for the things that we have rather than pining away for, you know, this experience or that experience or this experience just to kind of feed the Joneses, so to speak. Um, so that is still something I'm trying to, to cultivate in my daily life is just more appreciation for the slowness and the beauty. And, and I have a mantra that I sometimes invoke, which is I have everything that I need. Mm, indeed. Indeed. And more. <laughs> For sure. Yeah, exactly. Definitely more than I need. So when you teach Qigong, are you teaching Qigong at a local place in Colorado or do you teach online? Yeah, I teach online um, primarily right now. I've, I've tried to run live classes uh, in the Boulder area over the past 10 years in many different formats in just like weekly drop-in formats, in six-week series, um, in just like one-day workshops with varying levels of success. Like Boulder's a very young town. It's very, like people are just go, go, go. And they want their workout. They want to like check it off the list and Qigong is sort of the opposite of that. Qigong is like, okay, slow down, stop doing, and just really be present with yourself and with the infinite realm of the universe. Um, so I've found that it's it's more accessible to a wider audience when I'm I'm teaching online. Um, so I too I currently teach two classes online a week. 
And I teach a style called Sheng Zhen Gong. And Sheng Zhen means uh, sacred truth. And the premise or the philosophy of this style is that unconditional love is that that truth. Unconditional love is the, the seed from which everything else sprang. Uh, it, it existed like before the Big Bang. That was the original energy. Like, have you ever felt so excited about something so full, so filled with love that you feel like you're going to explode? Mm-hmm. When I see that was the energy. That was the energy that like the unconditional love that then like, boom, the big bang and the universe was created. And so the, the philosophy then being that we have access to that anytime we want it, but our modern lifestyles of busyness and doing and going, we lose that sense of connection. And it's only in the disconnection from unconditional love that then things like greed and violence and hatred and jealousy and sort of all the negative emotions come to rise. So if we can, you know, remove the own, our own barriers that we've put up to, to feeling the presence of unconditional love at every moment of every day, then we can exist just in a more connected place, uh, in a, in a greater sense of connection to the oneness that we all are, that, you and I are connected, not only through this digital realm, but also through a felt sense of energy and just being a human being in this world. And the movements, I had tried a number of different styles of Qigong before I got into Shenzhen. And it was amazing because I had always been fascinated by the concept of energy and like the idea of energy. But as I mentioned before, I came from a very sort of scientific and secular background. And so, I always was just like, it seems too easy, like so too subjective for someone to just say like, oh, this energy, that energy, but how do I know, you know? So while I was fascinated by it, I did, I had some skeptic skepticism about it. And Qigong opened me up to actually feeling energy in the palms of my hands. And that to me was like mind blowing. And so I practiced a, a few different styles of Qigong from when I was first introduced to it in 2009 up until 2012. And through those years, I graduated from massage school. I was continuing my education in shiatsu, which is the bodywork version of acupuncture based in Chinese medicine. Mm. And so still continuing to practice Qigong and then starting to manage a wellness center. And we opened up a new location and I was doing an advanced training in shiatsu and working like 90 hours a week and was also on the board of directors for that shiatsu program, like building the program. So I was stretched super thin and I had given up all of my practices, like just in the interest of like the doing, right? The checking off the list, this thing and that thing and doing as fast as I could. And it led to a nervous breakdown for me. Like I felt so brittle in my being that when someone would even say my name, it just felt like glass shattering inside me. I was like, I have nothing left to give. What do you want from me? You know? And I couldn't take, I just had this breakdown. But that day at the wellness center that I was managing, a man walked into the studio and said, I'm here to talk to someone about teaching Qigong. And I was like, oh, well, I'm the person that you need to talk to. Let's, the studio happens to be open. Let's go into the studio space and you can teach me a little bit. And he was a Shenzhen teacher. And from that place of knowing what energy felt like in the palms of my hands, we practiced Shenzhen. And all of a sudden, I felt it in my whole body, in my whole being. And I felt my heart in that moment expand in a way that I had never experienced before. And I was like, this is it. And so I dove in. I Within a month, I was at a five-day retreat with um, Master Li Zhengfeng who is the, the sort of founder or creator of the Shenzhen style. And, uh, and I practiced every day for six months until I felt back to my normal self. It took, it took that time, amount of time, but I didn't need like any meds or hospitalization or, or anything like that. So, so Shenzhen is very dear to my heart, very near and dear. Wow, I love that. So you practiced every day for six months to basically heal from what you went through. And I'm assuming you slowed down your pace at the same time so that 
you didn't keep beating yourself up, right? Right. Well, a little bit. And so the the like the really magic thing about Qigong and and Shenzhen in particular, um, I, I cut my hours back to about seventy a week, but that's still a lot, right? Uh, but the thing about Qigong is that it changes your relationship between yourself and the things in your life. So I was where I was always like cowering underneath all of the weight and the pressure and the to do's and the stress. All of a sudden I was able to connect with, uh, the infinite part of myself and the greater spirit to have that fill me up. And then all of a sudden I became bigger than my circumstances. So not much changed about the external circumstances, but I changed my relationship to those external circumstances. You see, it was an internal. So, wow, that's, that's what it is. Yeah. (laughs) That is amazing. I'm going to have to take one of your classes for sure. Now I have another question. So yoga, are you currently Mm -hmm. teaching yoga as well? I'm not, nope, teaching yoga the, I taught for a while here in Boulder, um, but there's so many yoga teachers around and, and Qigong is, is really my passion and my love. So I was like, well, I'll just let the people who really are, love yoga and are super passionate about it, teach that. And I'll bring them into the retreats, of course, to, to incorporate yoga. Cause I definitely believe in its value and its power. And it was, it was my like one of my introductions into this field as well, um, but I resonate more with the Chinese medical perspective rather than the Ayurvedic perspective, and those are the two kind of like root philosophies behind Qigong and yoga, perspe- uh, respectively. So, um, so I don't teach yoga. Okay, so you teach Qigong twice a week. How long is your typical class? Um, an hour. And we spend a little bit of time just kind of chatting in the beginning, a little bit of time uh, warming up our bodies with various movements and then doing some movements. I I teach a number of different forms. um, And then we always end with a little bit of meditation. So it's sort of like ending a yoga class with Shavasana to allow for the integration of the the energy. So we always end with about 10 or 15 minutes of meditation to integrate the chi. Oh, cool. Now, is that your prescription for helping people with like anxiety and addiction and all of that type of stuff? It's definitely my go-to, but I don't, um, the prescription is a, is a tricky word because in, you know, in Chinese medicine, there's no like one way for everybody. And, and I think of, I think of like all the different healing practices, you know, and all of the different people as notes on a scale. So, you know, if you resonate at a certain frequency or certain note and Qigong like has a certain resonant frequency, you may or may not harmonize, right? You may have like a dissonant relationship with that particular practice or one particular style of Qigong, but that doesn't mean that Qigong doesn't have value in general, right? Um, It's just that maybe it's not for you. And maybe it's not for you at this particular time in your life. So just like you were saying, you've sort of like fallen out of your daily practice with Qigong. Maybe it's just that you need different daily practices right now. And there's nothing wrong with kind of like ebbing and flowing in the different practices as they serve you, as you evolve in your growth and your healing and, uh, and you just find different things that, that resonate at different times of life. So I think there's value. Thing. I I personally love Qigong and I like to promote it to, to everyone that I talk to. Oh, you're having trouble sleeping? Try Qigong. Oh, you're having anxiety? Oh, I would do some Qigong. Like, oh, you're emotionally eating? Oh, try some Qigong. That'll help balance your emotions. Like, But, you know, people try it and they don't and they feel it and they don't. And, you know, I'm just here to hold space and, and offer some, some gifts that I found useful in my particular path. I love that. But I'm word. also open to... Yeah. Holding space. That's beautiful. And I also like what you said about just being, because somebody said to me recently, we are human beings. We're not human doings. (laughs) Right. Exactly. And I'm, I'm like totally like guilty, like first in line to be like, what else can I check off the list? I'm going to go do, I'm going to do, you know, (laughs) I love crossing things off lists. It's like one of my weird nerdy, you know, things that makes, makes me so excited. But, um, but yeah, and I think that's why it's extra important to them balance that with a a state of Mm non-doing and just a state of being. 
and and yes, sleep counts, but also a conscious state of non-doing, like being awake and the, the art of doing nothing, you know? Yeah. As I need to practice that again. Ever since COVID hit, I have just been running ar- running ragged. It's like opposite of what you experienced. Like I'm the young, like always doing, 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 and I need to stop more often. And um, yeah. so that's one of my goals is to bring back my personal practice, like my meditation practice for me, the Qigong for me, the yoga you know, it's just like my son's visiting right now from New York. And then I said, okay, after this, when he's gone, then it's going to be all about me. Yeah. I'm curious, um, when you first started practicing Qigong, uh, like, what did you notice? What changed for you? What did you like about it? I felt that energy as I was doing it, but I didn't, I don't think I did it long enough or consistent enough to experience what you did. But you know, like in that movie when Harry met Sally and Meg Ryan is just going crazy in the restaurant and everybody says, I want what she's got. Being with you right now, I'm like, okay, well, I want what she's got. So now I'm like, okay, I got to start doing my practice again. Right. I bet you have that with everyone you have on your show, though. You're like, I want to do what you do. Like, it sounds so amazing. No, I don't. I don't, actually. Um, but I'm very, like, I was raised Christian well, I, since all my life. So what you said about your, like, awakening or whatever, I still consider myself a Christian, but I also consider myself more open to... Um, that we're all one, you know? Absolutely. And that there's no judgment or right or wrong. It's just like we're all basically having the same philosophy, just calling it a different name. Right, exactly. And so uh, you would be, I've been having some really interesting conversations recently with a pastor friend of mine whose name is Roger Wolsey. And uh, he has authored a book called Kissing Fish subtitled Christianity for people who don't like Christianity. And cause he and I are running, we've been friends for about 12 years and he and I are running, um, a retreat together in September. And, um, so we have all these videos that we've been recording on Facebook about that concept of exactly what you're talking about is uh, cause most of, I think, again, from a secular point of view, from a non-religious point of view, my perception of Christianity is very much tied up in the evangelical, super conservative, very judgmental type of Christian. And he um, is a leader of a church that, uh, he's specifically a Methodist pastor, but he identifies as a progressive Christian. And so I started reading his book and progressive Christianity is all about what you're talking about. It's like, way still believe in God, from the Christian perspective, but have a lot more openness and accepting of other people's beliefs and other viewpoints. And so it's been really, really interesting to learn about that side of Christianity. So you might be interested in checking out uh, some of the videos on Facebook. Yeah, for sure. Because I was like at that evangelical, like having to save people and it's not my job, you know, it's like, and I don't, I don't any longer believe that there's just one way. I found out semi-recently that there's actually a ton of books of the Bible that never got published. And it was meant to keep a certain narrative that made us more reliant on the church. I'm sure I'm going to have right. people listening to this going like, oh my gosh, this is blasphemy. But, but we don't know right. what we don't know. And we don't know that we don't know certain things. So it's being open to possibilities and realizing that everything doesn't seem, everything isn't always as it seems. So, but one of the books I heard of the Bible that was not published was a book of Muhammad. So that's just kind of curious, right? Like, um, I don't know why all this happened or I don't know enough about it, but somebody said to look at the Red Sea Scrolls. And that explains it. I haven't gone deep dive down that because I just don't have time. Um, Right. But it it does make sense. I'm open to anything, you know? Yeah. Well, my understanding is that Muhammad, yeah, came from the Christian background. And then at some point there was sort of a split. And then he became, you know, associated with a different religion. I'm not even sure which one. And then there were like the more typical Christians. But it all sort of stemmed from the same 
thing. So yeah, I totally get what you're talking about, but I'm by, by no means a scholar. I'm fascinated by all of the stories and all of the similarities as I look at them from the outside. Like there's obviously a global thirst to connect with something beyond just this physical human experience because it's been going on for millennia throughout human history. People have been ascribing various things in their life that happen to, to powers, higher powers that be, you know? Um, so I just think it's many paths to the same mountaintop, you know? Yes, exactly. And why would I think my path is better than your path? You know, I saw a really interesting like story on, um, I don't know, somewhere on social media. It said that red ants and black ants together in a jar will get along and coexist just fine. But when that jar is shaken, they start fighting. So the question huh. remains is who shook the jar? Uh huh. Okay. <laughs> right? Isn't that interesting? But it's like it reminds me of that division in religion and how we tend to, like, how many world wars are fought over religion. But if everybody just looked at us as being universal love, you know, right. and having that God over umbrella that incorporates all of us, then we don't have to worry about who's right. You know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. Like, how does it affect me based on who you worship as long as the tenets of your creed are, you know, preaching essentially the same lessons of love and acceptance and help thy neighbor and clothe and feed the poor, give them a leg up, you know, I think it's all in the interest of the same good spirit. So, yeah. and I, and it, uh, again, there's that spiritual thirst that's ubiquitous, you know, and that's one of the, the reasons why we tie that into our wellness retreats too. Cause in the modern, you know, wellness industry, there's so much talk about exercise and diet. Those are the you know primary two things that we hear about, like exercise more, eat better, exercise more, eat better. But we don't often hear people bringing in the concept of mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, and how, if we're a little off kilter in any one of those areas, then that shows up in a behavior that's often reflected through our exercise habits and our diet, right? So if we can get at the root of what's causing us perhaps to emotionally eat or overeat or be lazy um, and not move our bodies and, and feel good, the root is often in one of those like mental, emotional, or spiritual realms rather than just being a cause in and of itself. Yeah. So we like to bring all of those things um, into our retreats. So you guys talk about all of that. That's fantastic. So how often do you do these retreats? Well, still in the growth phase with the business. So um, we were we were slated to do three in 2020, but then COVID hit. And so we're just sort of emerging uh, from the pandemic. We have our first retreat scheduled for September um, here in Colorado. And as I mentioned, that's going to be the, the like more spiritual retreat. And definitely lots of talk about um, about just spirituality and how we each connect. And, and we're looking forward to everyone bringing their wisdom and sharing their wisdom with a group. Um, we have a, a retreat in November um, to Baja, Mexico. So that one's all about connecting with water and the ocean and surf and sand. And uh, the other one that we have scheduled right now is to Thailand to an amazing facility called Jungle Yoga. That's going to be late March 2022. And it's a, a floating uh, little village of huts on a lake in the middle of a national forest in the middle of Thailand with no cell phone service. So you can't get on social media. You can't get bombarded by news. You're just there with nature, with your fellow people. We're going to do yoga. We're going to do Qigong. We're going to explore the jungle and go swimming and go kayaking and uh, eat amazing food. The food is incredible. Um, so it's going to be a good time. So we have three scheduled over the coming nine months uh, with more to come in the future. So, Oh my gosh, I have got to get on one of those. That is sounds amazing. Now, when you were in Thailand yeah. last time, did you have a massage? I did. I had a number of different massages. Yeah, absolutely. <sighs> I've heard that they give the best massages. 
Thai massage uh, is very intense. It can be very intense. There's lots of, um, it's really different from kind of traditional American massage with oils on a table, you know? Uh, so you keep your clothes on, you're on the floor, and, and they, that enables them to like move you around and stretch you and twist you without, um, you know, exposing you. Um, <laughs> It's a much more modest culture, you know, in terms of like clothing and things like that. So, uh, but it's very intense, particularly if you're a tight, you know, person already don't have much flexibility. It can be very intense, wow. but, uh, but enjoy. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. My post office guy, cause I live in a really small town and he said, Oh, Thailand's the best vacation I've ever had. So I thought that oh, was wow. interesting. Yeah. yeah. You should definitely try to hop on one of the trips. Ah, oh, definitely. So how can people find out more about your trips? Um, the website is the best way, integraltravel.com. Uh, we have all of our trips on there. Uh, we have the, the links to the classes, which, by the way, the, the two Qigong classes online every week are totally by donation. So there's no, um, you know, no financial commitment and we have free meditations on there. We have lots of different things to offer, um, for kind of every different step of a person's healing journey. And we're always expanding. So we're just about to release a series of cleanses to help with nutritional aspect. Um, again, the Qigong and, and just looking forward to more growth and bringing in more tools. Oh, perfect. And currently, and that's integraltravel.com. Is that right? Yep. Yep. Integral, I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L, travel.com. And when are your Qigong classes? What days? What Thursdays times? and Saturdays, 9 a.m. Mountain Time. So it'd be 8 a.m. Pacific, uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. Okay, perfect. So some of you guys listening are going to have to go on one of those classes with me. <laughs> I'm excited to take one of those. That's so fun. And what about social media, Jessica? Where can they find you on social? We're on Facebook at Integral Travel. Um, Instagram, Integral underscore Travel. And we do have a YouTube channel too with um, continually putting out content, building more content uh, uh, specifically about like stretches and the more physical stuff that you can keep your body or that you can do to keep your body pain free. Um, if you just, I'm not sure the actual like channel name, but if you just put in YouTube search integral travel, you'll find us. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I, I love that. Have you ever done yin yoga? I have. Yeah, Absolutely. That's like one of my new favorites because just being my age, I'm 55. I have so many joint things from lifting weights all these years that it is amazing at how that helps my joints, you know? Absolutely. Just letting all the tendons and ligaments relax. And yeah, it's so relaxing. It feels great. So I have one more question for you. When you, with your personal Qigong practice, how long of, during a specific day do you do the routine or whatever you call it? Yeah, um, a great question because I do think that um, the amount of time that that a person thinks that they have to devote to a practice often keeps them from doing the practice. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, so when I do a form, which is a set of movements, um, there are 18 different forms in Sheng Jen, and I only know about eight of them because um, I'm still, you know, a student on the path and learning as well. So they each take different amounts of time, but on average, I'd say 20 to 30 minutes a day. Even sometimes some of the forms are 10 minutes. Um, and just like the, the style of Qigong that you've experienced, there are moving forms and there are non-moving forms. And there are, you know, sitting forms in a chair. There are lying down forms. There are standing forms. Um, there are more physical and like robust forms. And there are way more calm um, and relaxing forms. So there's a little bit of something for everyone. But 10 to 30 minutes, just depending on how much time I have to give it that day. And do you rotate through during your classes on Thursdays and Saturdays? So you just do different ones at different days? Yep. Yeah, I do. And sometimes we'll go really deep in, you know, one or two movements and just do them the whole time, which I know seems like a long time to do a movement. But the more that you repeat the movement, then the deeper you can go and the more that you can really feel what it is that you're supposed to feel rather than just being focused on the mechanics of the movement. 
Um, so some classes are just really deep in one or two movements and some classes are just sort of going through an entire form, which may be anywhere from eight movements to 20 movements, um, to get the whole experience of the flow and how they connect. And then the whole energetic experience of, of the, the total kind of sum of each of the movements. Now, how does that differentiate from Tai Chi? So Tai Chi is a type of Qigong, actually, just like yin is a type of yoga. Um, and Tai Chi is the one that most people are familiar with, right? When I when I ask people, oh, have you heard of Qigong? No. Well, have you heard of Tai Chi? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then you've, you've by extension, then heard of Qigong. And Tai Chi is just a specific set of movements, just like Sheng Zhen has these forms that are specific sets of movements. Tai Chi is, uh, is a very specific set of movements. It's also a certain style of Qigong. There are kind of three main types of Qigong. There's um, martial styles like Tai Chi, which are meant to be kind of, if you were to speed them up, you could kind of like learn how to throw someone across the room, for example, like you see in like martial arts movies, you know? (laughs) Um, And then there are medical styles. There's a really famous um, MD slash OD um, in California. His name is Roger Yanga, who's um, he came up with 10 phase integral Qigong, which is a medical style of Qigong designed to heal you from the inside out. Because the practice, you know, in any form or style of Qigong, you're connecting with universal energy and then either using it like in combat or using it to heal yourself, using it as you've experienced to heal others. Or the third main type of Qigong is spiritual. And they're not, these styles are not mutually exclusive, right? There's some overlap between their benefits. And so the Sheng Zhen is a spiritual type of Qigong meant to connect you to the divine energy and um, and heal you. Also has that healing property of balancing your emotions, opening your heart, relaxing your body, just um, really kind of softening your whole entire being. So, boy, you're making me yearn for this experience. Like you're a good, you're good at what you do because you make people want what you have. You know, like you're, it just. Oh wow! I know that the listeners are going to feel the same way because it's just so inspiring. It's like wow, so awesome. So well, in- I hope to see you and some of your listeners uh, in class on Thursday or Saturday anytime in the future. Absolutely, for sure. And I just want to thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. Um, To wrap things up, is there anything you want to leave the listeners with? Um, Yeah, I just want to let you all know. um, Thank you so much, first of all, for listening and for having me, Tracy. Um, But whatever you're going through in your life, there is always someone who can help, who has some wisdom to offer. And you have power too to heal yourself, to heal your body, heal your heart, heal your mind. Mm. Yes, that's that's for sure. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today, Jessica. It's a pleasure. I can't wait to see you in one of your classes and hopefully, God willing, one of your retreats. November sounds nice because it's not too far, but I have to say my dream is to go to Thailand one of these days. I just don't know if my husband would be very supportive of me being halfway around the world without him. <laughs> well, bring him too. Why does he yeah. have to be excluded? He can come too. No, he's not a good traveler like that. So I have to have a discussion with him about it. So awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you again. And I, I really enjoyed speaking to you today, my dear. I did as well, Tracy. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, thank you so much for listening. That was awesome. I'm dying to go on one of her wellness retreats. Will it be Baja or maybe it will be Thailand if I get good and lucky? Please share this episode with a friend. And if you haven't already, please go ahead and go over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. And if you know anyone who'd be an awesome guest, feel free to contact me at Tracy at highenergygirl.com. All right, everyone, make it a great day. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. 
Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.